Welcome to the Alan Elkan Interviews, an unprecedented window into the minds of some of the most well-known and respected figures of the last 25 years. We are in Tangiers today. Rob Ashford doesn't really need a presentation that he's an award winner and he's an American choreographer, a stage director and many other things. You were born in Florida. I was born in Orlando, Florida. And when I was one, my parents moved to a small town in West Virginia, Beckley, West Virginia, which is a coal mining center of that Appalachian area. So I grew up there in Beckley, West Virginia. So you, you grew up in a kind of a bourgeois family? I grew up in a very working class family. My dad was a school teacher, an elementary school teacher. My mother worked for the government. There was a an academy in Beckley that taught mine inspectors how to inspect mines and to uh, promote safety in the underground coal mines in West Virginia, which is the major and probably only source of income for the entire state. Because you went to school later in college at the Lee uh, University. Washington and Lee, that's right, in Virginia. I was going to be a lawyer. lawyer, The plan was to be a lawyer. Why did you want to be a lawyer? Your father wanted that? No, no. Actually, to be honest, it was growing up of limited means. And you see the folks who have the haves and the have-nots, and it just seemed like lawyer or doctor are the two things that uh, make you financially okay in the future. When I went to Washington Lee, and I was very fortunate to uh, get a scholarship there, thanks to my mother, because where she worked at the Mining Academy, we have a senator from West Virginia, Robert C. Byrd, and he was there visiting one day the Mining Academy, and my mother boldly went up to him and said, my son wants to be a lawyer. Where do you think he should go to school? Senator Byrd said, Washington and Lee University in Lexington, Virginia has a great law school. And they have one scholarship per year to a student from West Virginia. Senator Byrd helped me get that. He wrote a recommendation for me. So I did get that uh, scholarship. When I arrived, said to be a good trial lawyer, you need to major in English or theater. And you chose theater. I chose theater. I chose and so theater. you fell in love with theater. I fell in love. And as I'm sure many, 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 many people in this world will tell you, once that bug bites you, you're done for. You're, but you're at in. the beginning, but then you went to Pittsburgh, right? Right. To study ballet. To study dance. That's dance. right. You said you love theater, but how did you become a dancer yourself? You well, know, we did not uh, an actor. Well, in school, I was studying to be an actor, really, at Washington Lee. Well, I was really wasn't studying much at all. The department was very small. I was studying all the courses that one would usually take in college. And uh, they have a very rigorous academic program at Washington Lee, and I was fortunate for that because I learned so much that had I only gone to a performing arts college or something, I don't think I would have learned any of those things that are so important now to me. And I had a job in the summer, the Summerstock Theater, non-union Summerstock, you know, making $85 a week as an actor. And the first day of rehearsal, one of the dancers didn't show up. And they came up to me and said, well, I know you're not a dancer and you don't dance at all, but can you, you look like a dancer and you seem like a dancer. So could you fill in till we get a real dancer here? Just try to fill in and be in the spot when they need you and just try to do your best. I don't know why, but it came very naturally to me. I was able to pick it up and I'm sure it was primitive at best, but I was able to do it. It wasn't really a classical show. It was a musical. So it was more about energy. And I do remember lifting lots of young ladies all the time. It was all about the lifting. (laughs) And I was actually good at that for some reason. (laughs) So um, the dance captain, the woman who was in charge of the show, she said, I think you could be a dancer if you wanted to be. And I said, really? She goes, yeah, I think you could. I love doing it. I love the expression of your body and not about words, but about, you know, the emotion and how you move through air. So she invited the head of the jazz department from this dance college in Pittsburgh, Point Park College, now it's a university, invited him down to see the show and teach a masterclass. So he came down, 
taught a class, which of course I took, saw the show and offered me a full scholarship to go to Point Park. So we can say you're talented and lucky in the same time. Yes, huh? exactly. And, and you know what happens to you, it's afterwards you go to New York and you share the apartment with Kathleen Marshall. That's right. She's the wife yeah, of a famous choreographer. And they are both from Pittsburgh. They're both from, she's the so sister. I'm, she's the sister of Rob Marshall, the yeah, choreographer the and the director the yeah, who did yeah, Chicago, yeah, right, for right, example, right. you know, the film so, Chicago. So, so uh, you are, it's like if you were driven to that. Not yes, no, yeah, in inevitable. Way. It feels inevitable somehow. And for how long do you dance? I danced on Broadway. I danced in Broadway shows for 20 years. Uh, one, I, was from show, I was a gypsy, you know, that's what they call us when you travel from show to show to show. And I was very, very lucky in my career to get to uh, do some wonderful We're in Lincoln shows. Center, right? I started at Lincoln Center in Anything Goes with Patti LaPone. She was the star. That was my first show. It was thrilling. It was a huge hit. And we had everyone, all the stars came to see it. And, you know, we did the Tony Awards and all of those wonderful things. And and then I did another show at Lincoln Center. Victor and Victoria. I did Victor and Victoria with Julie Andrews. Andrews. So as a dancer, I got to work with Patti Lapone, Cheetah Rivera, Julie Andrews, Liza Minnelli. How was it to work with Liza Minnelli? She was amazing. I loved working with I'll tell you the most amazing thing about Liza. She replaced Julie in the show. So Julie Andrews did the show for the first year, and then Liza came in. And I was the uh, dance captain of the show, so I helped teach and so rob marshall of course came back he choreographed victor victoria and so he came back to teach liza the choreography and also to make adjustments for liza because julie never claimed to be a dancer she's not a dancer at her strong point but liza of course is a brilliant dancer so robbie thought why we should take advantage of that and liza wanted to but the way liza minnelli learns the choreography is she sits in the front by the mirror and watches you do it and you do it over and over and over and over. She doesn't stand up and try it. You know, most people try to get it in their body. Most people stand beside you when you're teaching it or behind you. She sits at the mirror, watches you do it over, 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 over. And then she gets up and she can do it perfectly. Yeah. How old were you? At that time? Oh, I don't know. In probably at that time I was, in, yeah, I was probably 30 at that time, 31. And how was it to find yourself with all these things? Oh, it was, well, I mean, it, was, it was amazing. It was a dream. Then you did Parade? Yes, I did Parade. That was the last show I performed on Broadway, and that was at Lincoln Center. And I was the assistant choreographer, and I was the swing and the dance captain. So at Rob Marshall, he sent you to Buenos Aires at a certain did. point. He did. To restage Kiss in the, the 1988 Kids of the Spider Woman. That's right? right. That's when you became a choreographer? I did the tour of Kiss of the Spider Woman with Cheetah. Rob Marshall asked me would I be interested in going out on the road to take care of the show and take care of Cheetah, of course. And I said I would be thrilled to do that. And when they were doing a company of Spider Woman in Buenos Aires, Rob wasn't able to go. He was busy with many other projects at the time. And he asked me if I would go and restage the show for him in Argentina. And so... I did go, and that was the first time I was on the other side of the table, and the first time I understood the thrill of trying to communicate through dance and teach someone what the movement meant, what the acting beat is behind the kick, what it means when you rest your hand on his shoulder, what that look to over the shoulder means, what, what all of that means, because all of that is a good choreographer puts all that into the choreography and teaches the actors and the dancers, why they're doing what they're doing. And so I found that a thrilling thing. to so more... you stopped at that point to be yourself a dancer? Well, at that point, I thought it would be thrilling to do this and not be a performer. I thought that would be thrilling. Also because age. That too. It's another problem. That too. That too. But after I did uh, Spider-Woman in Argentina and in Tokyo as well, I went back to New York and I went back into Victor Victoria. So I did Victor Victoria after that, but I always felt like I hope and wonder if I can be a choreographer. So when Parade finished, I went to Hal Prince, who was the director of Parade, and I said, I think I'd like to be a choreographer. And he said, well, show me your voice, kid. That's what he said. Show me your voice. So I got together a group of dancers that I knew, and we got in a space that someone loaned us in 
and I put together a dance and Hal came and saw it and brought some folks. And from that moment on, I felt I had that Hal had given me the blessing to be a choreographer. And all this was in the United States, right? Yes. Then, yes right. then after that, or at a certain point, you also start working in London. Yes, right? so a, a you, lot in London. Today, you have a double life in the I sense, do. not double life, but you yes, work in America and you work in England. Yes. You know? um, they both gave you something different. Right? Yes, absolutely. They're a great pair. They're a great combination creatively and artistically. The first Broadway show that I choreographed, which was Thoroughly Modern Millie, we did a production in London. So I went to London for the first time with the production of Millie. We did a London company of it. While I was there doing Millie and the choreography, uh, the show was up. A director there, Michael Brandage, who also ran the Don Mar warehouse in London. And where you still are, no? Which I, when Michael was there, I was uh, the, an associate of his for four years uh, during Michael. When the artistic director leaves, the associates leave as well. So so I, I, I'm no longer there, but I had a wonderful time there. And that's when I directed my very first shows. And the first show I directed was Parade. So after having been in at Lincoln Center, and it had not been the success that everyone had hoped it would be, when Michael said to me, I want you to direct your first show for us at the Don Mar, what would that be, your first musical? And I said, uh, I'd love to do Parade. It's better than what we did. I think we can figure out a way to do it. And Michael said, let's do Parade. So uh, we did Parade at the Don Mar, and it went really well. Jason Robert Brown, Alfred Urey, the creators of it, came back and rewrote things, and they were there with me, and we figured out a different kind of version of the show, which is the version that just won the Tony on Broadway for Best Revival. And after Parade's success, I said to Michael, I can't thank you enough for giving me this opportunity. And Michael said, well, what did you do? He after? said, direct your first play here. That's, That's how you right. can thank me. Direct your first play. And I said, well, I love Tennessee Williams. And he said, what's your favorite one? I said, Streetcar Named Desire. But obviously, I can't do Streetcar Named Desire. And he said, why not? If you want to do Streetcar, do Streetcar. He spoke to, we were thinking of who's going to play Blanche, of course. I said, it would be amazing to get someone like Rachel Weiss to play it. And he said, well, let's try. And he called her and put in a good word. And I met her a few times. And Rachel agreed to play Blanche. So I got to do my first play with Rachel Weiss and Ruth Wilson, and it was Streetcar Named Desire at the Dharma. You are talented and lucky because you cast actors quite easily in a way. You know, you catch the most very, yes. very good actors and actresses, right? You did Sunset Boulevard with Glenn Close, you did uh, Cinderella with uh, Kate Blanchett and uh, Kenneth uh, Branagh. You did Anna Christie with Jude Law. I love actors. Weirdly, a lot of directors don't love actors, but I absolutely love actors and love working with actors. Why? I love that uh, partnership. I love that I'm not completely responsible for everything. I'm responsible for half and they're responsible for half. And I think of it as a uh, tennis match. I think I give you this and then you bat it back to me and then I build on what you're doing because they're the ones playing the parts not me i don't tell them how to play it i just guide them through the production that i had envisioned as far as the physical life what's on stage what the lights are like you know so i have a basic idea but it's just like when you choreograph you know you make up a dance you have some steps ready but you get your dancer in the room and then you say kick your left leg and then turn to the right and and if she says, oh, my right leg's much better than my left, I say, okay, kick your right leg then. Mm -hmm. Don't go kick your left just because that's what I thought you should do. You know, she's like, I don't turn very well. So why don't we do something else? And I'm like, okay, kick your right leg then and then do a split, whatever it is. But you have to put it on the dancer. And the same with but directly. you like better actors or dancers? I love both. I love both. But they're very different. Part of my of double people. life. Part yeah, of my but double life. They're very life. different kind of people. They are very different. You know, one is. Uh, one is words, the other is, is moves. 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 Yes. But both are about telling the story. That's the point. Still, you've never been an actor yourself. No, I've never. No, Dancer, never. but not actor. Yeah. Right. But uh, what is the difference, for instance, in theater, right, between working in London or in New York? 
Everything is twice as expensive in New York. A production to put onto a stage is twice as expensive. I think it's all the unions, the unions and the union rules and the union salaries. And it's much stricter there. London is much more a place where you can experiment with something because it doesn't cost millions and millions of dollars. You can experiment and fail. There's not much room for failure in New York. Because But you have the same actors. Same actors do, no, but yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not that you have American actors in America, English no, actors in England. No, I mean, the world's so small now, especially between those two countries. I think the actors just go But back. But English is different. The use of the English language. It is different. And of so course, it is different. they differently in New York than I, they do I, in London? It's or? interesting. I would say if I had to try to, this is a, a gross generalization, but what I would say is in America, the emotion is what leads of the actor, how they're emotionally feeling in that moment in the play. And I feel like in London, of course, there's emotion, but there's also uh, technique and text, and they approach it in a different way, I think. I don't in know England, why. It's a very old tradition not to be an actor in theater. Yes, it there. is. I love working with both, and I find both have their challenges, but both are amazing. And I love to try to bring the one in, to the in, other. In the world of today, mm -hmm. you know, where everything is in television, everything is in in the telephone. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. People still love theater. They do, because people love experience. Or it has changed since your it, it has changed. I think it has changed, because I do think that it's less a way of life as it used to be. Certainly in London, I think it still is. I think it still is. Like, you go to the theater as part of your routine, the way we go to films and less to films. Nowadays. We go to less to films nowadays, yes. But the way we go to sporting events or what anything like that in America. I think now because theater is so expensive, tickets are very expensive. Coming to New York and bringing your family and seeing a show, that's very expensive. So I think theater in New York anyway has become more of a of an event. Like you come for an anniversary, a birthday, you come for Christmas, you come for something like that. Whereas in London I feel like people still come because it's Thursday. But it's not finished now, right? Because you also directed opera. I've you started with Barbara well. Seville in Seville. Chicago. Right? That's right. Barbara Seville in Chicago with the amazing Isabel Leonard, who uh, was the star of it. She's uh, was amazing. I, I loved it. I loved opera. I loved the combination of the acting, the music, the dance. And it is again something else. It is again something else. And there you have the singer. Yes, that's right. And the music wins the music rules everything which is wonderful and it's a great thing I, when i when i first moved to new york after i did anything goes when we closed i was in the corps de ballet at the met Metropolitan opera for a season i love being in that world i love being in that building i love being on that stage with those amazing singers and it was so thrilling being in the canteen with all i mean it was an amazing gift to get to do that in the middle of all my dancing on Broadway shows. I thought it was, was really, it was really. And how fun. do you manage to go from one thing to the other? How does it work? I think it's the same talent. It's the same spirit. It's just the focus is different. You just focus. And I'm a big one for uh, preparation and homework and all those kind of things. I love researching. I love feeling like I'm, prepared for something I love, but I don't know it all and I never claim to. And I think that's why the actors that I get to work with would consider coming back again because they know that they get to genuinely contribute. You have a special relationship with Kenneth Brown. Yes. You yes. did Macbeth together, right? That's exactly, that was our first thing together. We did Macbeth at the Manchester Festival, and it was a, a very exciting and thrilling production with the battles and the whole stage was mud and rain and he was amazing he was an amazing Macbeth and he taught me some that was my first Shakespeare that I'd done so it's kind of a bit of a gulp to be doing your first Shakespeare and you know trying to direct Ken Branagh as Macbeth, but he was so generous and open and he appreciated what I brought to it. He taught me so much about text and about the script and everything itself. So we worked together hand in hand. It was thrilling. And then we brought that production to New York, to the Park Avenue Armory. And that was 
very, very exciting and a real, uh, I mean, we ran three weeks, four weeks, something very short run. I mean, we had 1,100 seats. You couldn't get a ticket. It was like muddy and bloody and there was blood everywhere and mud everywhere. And the audience just really, really loved it. People would actually, we were worried at first, but anyone who sat in the first five rows would definitely get blood or mud or one of the two. We were worried because we thought, okay, those are the expensive seats. And so those are the people that are going to really be unhappy. People called and requested the bloody seats. <laughs> I'd like the bloody seats, please. <laughs> and then Ken wanted to do a season of plays in London at the Garrick Theater. And he asked me to come and be his uh, associate with that. So we worked on that season at the Garrick, which was... What did you do? We started with Winter's Tale with Ken Branagh and Judy Dench. We started with that one. It was amazing. Jesse Buckley. So you never worked with little actors. I mean, no, I don't, no. Why, why bother? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we did Romeo and Juliet with Lily James, with Richard Madden, with Derek Jacobi, with uh, Marissa Berenson, my good friend, Marissa Berenson. She came in, she played uh, Lady Capulet, Lily's mother. It was fabulous. It was a beautiful production. And we did The Entertainer. So I directed Ken in The Entertainer, which was also a real thrill. And he learned to tap dance for that. And uh, we did these wonderful vaudevillian routines that he was so good. And he was fantastic in that part. But then you also did some television experience, right? I did. did. What was that? They, they, I they, did. They, they, well, about indeed. people, about famous people. Right? We have this thing in America called the Kennedy Center Honors. And every year, five artists are honored for their contribution. And then live tributes are created for each one of them during that time. I was so fortunate to work with George Stevens Jr., who created the Kennedy Center Honors. His father was George Stevens, and he's an amazing man. And I learned so much from him about how to deal with stars and people like that because he was a master of it because every year you do this big thing you're asking hundreds of stars to come for free and come and perform at the kennedy center and salute the honorees so it was exciting but i got to do tributes for andrew Lloyd weber for shirley mclean for tom hanks for barbara cook for jerry herman for Meryl streep for all of these folks when they were on it. So I mean, you are friendly with all these stars. I mean, you are a friend, you work with them, you work with uh, Elena Bonham Carter, you work with Kate Blanchett, you work with Judy Dent. I mean, are you then friend? Well, sure, you, you do become friendly with them, you know, through the work. And it doesn't just feel like social when you have this giant task of creating something together. But all these actors that worked with you in theater, in comedy, or in drama, musical, mm -hmm. and dancers, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do they have a real passion for the job? They have. A, there's a reason that those stars are stars. They work so hard. They're so dedicated. They're so thrilled by it. On Broadway, I directed uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof with Scarlett Johansson, and she was amazing. Listen, she has the hugest movie career that anyone could have. But she wanted to do a play, and she wanted to do that play. And she dedicated herself to that for a great deal of time and lived it and was focused on it and was brilliant in it. Is there um, a big difference between acting in theater or acting in the cinema? Or? I would say there is a difference. I would say, again, the art is the same, but the techniques are all and different. Sometimes the Theater stars, great actors, mm -hmm. theater actors are not. They don't trans. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Movie stars and yes. the opposite. Yeah, not everyone can do both. I think it's. Uh, sometimes a theater star becomes small, have small parts in the movie. Yes. No? Some, sometimes it's hard for that transition to happen, and sometimes it's natural. I mean, I don't know what the reason is. I certainly could not decide why Scarlett can very easily do the stage or do film. I don't know. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. You said you started from a very simple family, middle-class yes, family. Yes. Lovely, supportive to... family, which is very helpful, actually. They were not disappointed at yeah. the beginning that you didn't want to be a lawyer. I think they were nervous at first. I moved to New York trying to be a dancer on Broadway, and my dad would be like, 
well, you'd had your practice two years now. Well, maybe you'd already be in court, trying cases in court and, and all of these things. And Do you have siblings? I have two brothers, two younger and brothers. They, did, uh... they, they thought it was thrilling. They thought it was fun. They did what I would call normal jobs, you know, sort of normal. I mean, my youngest brother, 10 years younger than I am, is a tennis pro and a tennis coach for... Uh, star players and travels the world. So I think maybe that's not a normal job either. I don't think that's <laughs> I mean, a normal job. What I job. wanted to say is that yeah. at a certain point, you probably made uh, enough money and it became more uh, yeah, yeah. comfortable. And uh, you love this place of Tangier, you know? In, in yes, I you, do. You have a house and you had a house. Yes, yes. And I, where you spend some, some time every I, year. I do. And what you did, I read that there was... Um, at the American school in Tangiers, his name was Phillips, you know, something mm -hmm. like who did once a year yeah, a performance. And then he was helped by the designer Yves Saint Laurent and other people to do that. All balls, all the balls music. And so yeah. on and so forth. But then he died. And with Madison uh, Cox, uh, the garden uh, landscape designer, mm -hmm. you revitalized that. Right. You decided to revitalize this one. Performance. When I first came to Tangier and I heard the legend of Joe Phillips and what he did with the plays and at the American school, he was the headmaster and how he would call in his friends, as you say, all of those amazing people. And he would do very bold plays. He wasn't like doing simple things for young people and, you know, seniors in, in high school. And then, of course, all that ended when Joe passed. But I thought, what a shame for that tradition not to continue. It was a, a lovely cultural moment for Tangier and, and for everyone here. But I thought, but maybe let's not do it with the students. Let's do it with proper actors. Let's bring actors. I'll just call in favors from friends of mine. And let's see if we can revisit that idea of doing a play in Tangier, a special play for Tangier. One, one performance one only. Night. And now we've done six, I think. We've done it six years and we still do the one night only. Our first play was Suddenly Last Summer because Ruth, Williams, Wilson. Ruth Wilson, Marissa Berenson, Tom Bateman, Linda Lavin, which we did in the garden at Villa Lane African. Uh, what do they do? They come for how do you do they come for what? What we do is we bring them for a week. They're here for a week. They come to Tangier for a week. They stay with us. They stay at my house, my husband, Kevin Ryan, and I. So they stay with us and we rehearse the play and do it on the Saturday. And that's finished. And then it's finished. We don't record it. We don't do anything like that. It's one night only. The actors carry scripts just to take the pressure off of also learning all the lines. They do it for free. They come and they all fall in love with Tangier. I promise you that. Uh, and you keep on doing it. We keep on doing so it. So what is next year? Is the I don't know. What the, I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. We started the first year of Building African, but after that we went to Gazebo, Rennie's house. That's where we started performing the plays. The first, we, did, night music. We, we did that. We did After the Dance, Terrence Radigan. Mm -hmm. We did that in uh, Veer's sitting room. So we did it in Veer's sitting room like two weeks after he moved into the house. So he was very kind to let us bring actors and an audience. So we performed it in his living room. It was, it, that had Natalie Dormer and it had Jesse Buckley and Phil Dunster and Greta Skaki and uh, James Norton. And uh, it was a wonderful cast. Then the next year we did Crucible and we built a stage over Veer swimming pool because we needed more seats. We didn't have enough seats inside the drawing room. So we built the stage over the swimming pool and we did the crucible at the pool. Ken Branna, Derek Jacoby, Alex Kingston, Marissa Berenson, Bertie Carvel. So that was a thrilling night. That was a thrilling performance. But it's, it's, for, it's a pleasure for you to do this. It's a pleasure to bring people to Tangier and introduce them to a place that I've fallen in love with. That when I, did you come to Tangier as well? The first time was, I think, like 2012, 2013, 2012, maybe. Madison Cox that you, talk, that you talked about had asked me to come and do the commencement speech at the um, American School in Marrakesh. And so since we were coming for that event, I thought, why don't we have a holiday? And why don't we go to Tangier? Because Kevin, my husband, had been here because he and Madison, he had helped Madison set up his office here. And so we rented a house in uh, 
Tangier. And we brought friends from Madrid and friends from New York and friends from London all came together and spent a couple of weeks here. And that was it. I was hooked. I was hooked from that moment on. And then the next year I was doing my first opera, my first Shakespeare, and I wanted a, a place to come and kind of... Uh, to study. To study, to learn how to do Why it. Why is it so special, Tangier? Everything is where it sits in the world. Africa and Europe and the Atlantic and the Mediterranean all meeting in this one point. That's where we are. That's where we're sitting right now. That, you live normally in New York. In and New York. You spend six months in London. Yeah, Why? so split the year. How does it work? It's, it's just, just back and forth. Just back and forth with work, whatever the project is. I just did a film in... Uh, Sydney. So I was there for three months. That was really fun. In, Australia. Australia. In Australia. Yes, that was good. So it's not always just New York and, uh, and London and Tangier, but that is... So what are your new projects? What are I'm, you going I'm working on a new... Right now, the next thing I'm doing on stage is a new musical based on the John Barrent book, Midnight and the Garden of Good and Evil, which was a bestseller for many years in America. And then Clint Eastwood made into a film with Kevin Spacey and Jude Law. You make it into a film. We're making it into a musical for the stage, yeah. And you're going to direct it. I'm directing that, yes. And we're doing that in Chicago. Our out-of-town tryout is in Chicago in June. So that's exciting. But there are a couple of plays for New York, a couple of plays for London. There's a revival of a big musical that I'm not allowed to say what it is yet, but a big revival on Broadway of a musical. I'm working on this limited series for television based on the John Lahr book, Mad Pilgrimage of the Flesh, Story of Tennessee Williams. And this is a limited series that is all about streetcar, the creation of streetcar, the writing of it, the uh, inspiration of it, all the way through to the original opening night at Barrymore Theater in New York. So that's a very exciting So which project. is the so, biggest hit? In your career? I would say for different reasons. You know, if you talk about acclaim or do you talk about awards or do you talk about what made awards, you feel you have many best. Tonys. I have a Tony for, I do have a Tony, I have Olivier and an Emmy, which is very nice to have. And that's what <laughs> was for which? The Tony was for Thoroughly Modern Millie. My first show that I did, I won the Tony for choreography, yeah, which was really nice, <laughs> which was very <laughs> helpful in the uh, career. The Emmy was for the Oscars, actually. I worked with Baz Luhrmann on a big production number for Hugh Jackman and Beyonce. It was called The Musical is Back or something. So it was the year uh, that there were a lot of musicals nominated and had just come back to the year after Chicago, I think. So we did this huge production number, like 100 dancers, Hugh Jackman and Beyonce. It was thrilling and working with Baz Luhrmann, who was, who was so great. He's, he's become a good friend, and but that was the Emmy. And the Olivier was for Anna Christie that you mentioned. The Jude, Dom, Law. Jude Law and Ruth Wilson. Yeah, But they are not necessarily the thing that gave you more glamour. Uh, oh, well, you well, did well, a Vita for him. I did. I did a Vita. was amazing. Count on a hot tin roof on Broadway with Scarlet. That was thr pretty thrilling, too. I mean, it's like... Picking your favorite child. It's hard to do that. I mean, Macbeth with Ken Brown, I mean, that was... Do you have other projects together? Uh, yes, we're talking about some other things. Yes, Ken and I are. I think we will always be creating together, I think. When he directed uh, the film of Cinderella for Disney, and he asked me, he said, would you please come and do the ball? Would you create the ball for Cinderella? Which was my pleasure. And it was so fun. And how do you work? Time. I work wherever, wherever I am at the time. I mean, if I have a, my choice, I like to do all of the research and creative part and the pre-stuff here in Tangier because it's the easiest. It flows. The inspiration is everywhere to me here. And then I love, there's some wonderful studios in London that I love working in. Well, it's another thing coming up. I'm doing this new production. It's a new play based on Sherlock Holmes, the characters, but it's the origin story of him, of that character, of that man. It is how can Conan Doyle... Less about Conan Doyle, it. but more about Sherlock. Like, how did Sherlock become Sherlock? How did that? How did he learn to do what he does? His deductions and all of those things. And also, it's more of a psychological look inside the head of Sherlock Holmes. And who is going to play? I don't know yet. I, I don't, don't know, know yet. I promise someone great. And I'm working on that with this amazing choreographer because it's going to have uh, 
music and dance, not singing, music and dance. And Akram Khan, who's this amazing choreographer who's based in London, contemporary choreographer. So we're working on it together. And I'm really, really excited and about it. What that. would you say nowadays? Is London more creative than New York or vice versa? Well, maybe I mean, not, because some others say no. Now Paris is the game. Yeah, maybe. Big, I mean, big, big. I think London, because of the way that things are structured and the fact that they have these theaters that are supported and funded, you know, in part by the government, but also obviously by when the costs are lower, it just allows for more room to grow and more room to try and more room to fail. So that really does help. But it was like this since the beginning in New York. For instance, Lincoln Center has huge donors. You know? I mean, they New do. York public is very generous. You know, they are. The they are. Or for the, the opera, music all and of it. Opera. Yeah, the Philharmonic. Yeah, they are very generous. But again, it doesn't make the costs any less. And so the stakes are high. But in America, if I'm not wrong, I don't know if it's the same in England, the many summer experiences of theater in smaller cities. Yes, yeah, summer stock. Summer. So yeah, yeah, we we do that in, in do America. That in America, yeah. Are you still doing that? Too? Yeah, that that still definitely happens in in America. No question. You don't feel that you should also live in Los Angeles, for instance, the city of cinema. Or? No, I mean I do love LA, and every time I spend time there and work there, I've loved it. But I think that there's very little theater there. And uh, that's my home and my heart. And when the, uh, there's the need to do a film or the want or the request, I, I'm thrilled to do it. But the home is... Your home is the theater. theater. My home is the theater. And in New York and in London. And I'm very, very happy to spend my time and all my creative energy there. And as everyone has dreams, right? Mm -hmm. Are there some dreams in your life? I mean, things you haven't done that you would like to do? Oh, you don't think like that? No, I mean, I recently, the way I've been thinking is like, I would like to go create theater or dance or opera in places all over the world. There's something about doing these plays in Tangier that have opened that part up to me that I want to go do a musical in an amphitheater in Greece, which I think I might be in doing. In Greece? Soon. Yes. For example, it's just about the world. It's also about taking it to the world and creating for different spaces i find that thrilling like the armory like i mean you were at la scala you were at Scala. Yes. Yes. yes yes oh you already did that i've somehow. done that i've You're done that but i mean i just want to keep doing it maybe that's my dream is to, to keep, keep on doing, doing it. to keep doing it something into, once when you started how long ago you started to be a director a uh, that was 10 years 2000 ago. yeah 20 years ago yeah, yeah. There were still many more stars, actors, men, women. Some of them were the real stars. Mm -hmm. right? Nowadays, they're much less. Of them. Why? Because there are less good actors or in the younger generation. Oh, no. Or I... It's just change. You know, we're talking film and we're talking theater, but there's also television. And I think what television has become and all the actors that have go there and are taken there and you mean the series? The, yeah, uh, these wonderful series that, you know, like Succession and The Crown and all of these. Yeah, but these people are famous, but they're not Florence Olivier or... No, that or is Vanessa, true. Or, you that know, these true. kind of actors, yeah. actresses like mm -hmm. Vanessa Redgrave. I do feel like the young people are just as talented, though. I just think that uh, it will take a minute before we understand that they are the next... Oh, there, is le there is less... Uh, Star culture today. I mean, certainly in the theater, that's true. I think everybody wants to do it all. All of the actors don't want to just do theater. They want to do film and television and theater, and they want to build their careers that way. There are no more characters like Noel Coward or <clears throat> like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have character. I just think it's very different than Noel Coward. You know, I mean, Stephen Fry, and we have some wonderful characters that are amazing and clever and do everything and act and write and direct and you know they do film and tell i mean we have those wonderful people i just think that you know we're not far enough away from it that they're legends yet maybe we're thinking legends you know no coward so who are your legends that's a good question in the different fields yeah Let's start with the beginning in ballet for yes who are the legends that like you? I Your mean, legends. I mean, I saw 
Urshnikov and Gelsey Kirkland danced together at the Met, and I was absolutely enthralled beyond belief. I thought they were amazing. I never saw Nureyev dance. I wish I had uh, my lucky streak. The the first time I went to my first Broadway show, Anything Goes, and I had my first holiday, and I went to Italy because I'd never been and I wanted to go. And uh, Chid Rivera had recommended going to Positano, so that's where I went. And so I went to Positano and was in a little Pensioni. No, I did meet Zeffirelli, who was there. But what I noticed from my little pensione, they were building a stage on the beach. And I was like, what is that for? I spoke no Italian, spoke trying to communicate with the woman. And she said, Saturday night, Saturday night. And she kept saying, I, I was trying to figure out what was performing. I saw no posters anywhere, no signs. And she came up to me, ticket for me, the woman who ran the pensione. And she said, a ticket. A ticket for the Saturday night for whatever the dance was going to be on the beach. And it was Carla Fracci. I mean, I, who was, it was amazing. Believe. She, I couldn't believe it. She did a, a piece, the Isadora Duncan piece. Her hair was beach. blowing on the beach, white dress, barefoot, a red scarf, the wind blowing, the waves lapping. Magic. Oh, I'll never forget it. And I'll in the never theater? It. Cheetah Rivera. She's amazing, a great dancer and an actor and a singer. And I am lucky to have worked with her and to know her. I've been lucky I got to work with a few of them, so that's good. A few legends. Yeah, a few legends. I mean, Judy Dench, to be in the room with Judy Dench is pretty amazing. Right. She's just so, I want to say smart, but it's not about being smart, though she is very smart. But in some way, how she puts them all together to create this performance that is beyond moving. And also when you see it time after time after time after time, what you do when you're directing it and finding all the new colors and watching how she builds on it and watching how she self edits herself and watching how she finds the moment that feels the truth. So she's always aiming for the truth. And yet also she's always understanding the build of the speech, the build of the soliloquy, how that, oh, if I do that there and I take the breath there. And so it's both completely emotional and completely technical at the same time. I find that unbelievable. You don't see an inch of technique, but yet still somehow the breaths and all that, she works all that in there along with the pure emotion and truth of it. And in the cinema, do you have a legend? Mm, God, there's so many. Also as a director, maybe. Yes. I am a huge Terrence Malick fan. Huge. I love his work. I mean, I love his attention to detail. I love Baz Luhrmann's theatricality. I love the way he uses music. And I mean, his Romeo and Juliet, I thought, was so beautiful, what Baz did. I love Ken's work in the theater. I thought Belfast was amazing that he did through COVID and over COVID, this small film about basically his childhood that he made that black and white film he did a spectacular job but i love i love all the epic pieces i love the big things too you know i, yeah. I still love watching ten commandments and ben hur and that would be a dream of mine to make a big epic sandal roman sandal i mean like a lawrence of arabia yeah epic. something yeah yeah some, some something like that or a musical version of something like that which was your favorite music? I mean, not favorite, but musical music. film. The uh, sound of music. The sound of music is and West Side Story because West of the Side dancing, Story. because of the dancing in it. West Side Story, Sound of Music. I mean, American in Paris. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know, Singing in the Rain. That's also pretty good. I love the Rodgers and Hammerstein. I love those classics too of the musical theater too. I love Carousel. It's, it's one of my favorite shows. I got to do that in Chicago Lyric Opera. That was and, and then with um, Liza Minelli, you liked Cabaret? Brilliant. I love Cabaret. Love Cabaret. So as I can see today in Pangeas, you haven't made the wrong job, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, you I haven't made to it. be a happy man. I mean, what oh, yeah. You? I am so happy. I couldn't be happier. I just want to keep doing it, but also keep growing in it keep trying to really i don't want to say re, it's not about reinventing yourself again it's the same thoughts and talents but to be better just keep trying to be better and not you just repeating better. myself think you are better 
I think I'm getting better. I think I'm getting clearer as a storyteller and as a, a collaborator, and especially working on new material. That's a real challenge when you're working with the writers to create it. It's one thing for you know, yeah, good it's writer. one thing for Shakespeare to hand you Winter's Tale. It's another thing for yeah, there are good writers out there. There are good writers. Yeah. Theater writers. There are good theater writers, and there are, and they're busy because there's there's not a lot of them. There's not an abundance, so um, they work all the time. But I do love collaborating with them and trying to help create the musicals that that will one day be classics as well. Thank you very much Thank for you. being with us today. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Alan L. Can interviews.